Here we are in the health management portion of Microsoft Purview. We're going, we enable your data owners and your data quality stewards to monitor the health of your data state and the metadata that helps to build your data catalog, always ensuring that you have trustworthy and valuable data that you're sharing. When we look at data quality, we start with the ability to view the domains and the score of each domain, so that way you can see how am I performing overall within data quality. Within that, you'll be able to see the data products that make up your domain and the data product quality scores. And as we get deeper, we'll be able to see the different assets that help to make up those data products. Within that, you'll see your Fabric Lakehouse tables, your Snowflake, Azure Databricks, Google BigQuery, and other data sources that are available to run your data quality on. When we talk about running data quality, within each table, you'll be able to see what rules are already running, what is the total trend of your data quality scores, if there's any action showing you things that you can do to go and improve your data quality, such as certain outlier values or if jobs have failed that you can go follow up on. When you talk about being able to build out a profile for your data, you'll be able to run a profile by selecting which columns you want to run and then select run profile. Here I've already run a profile on this specific data asset, so we can see the column names, the minimum, maximum, and distributions of the values that are within that specific column. And I can select the column and view details about how is that data distributed within this area? Where do I have specific blank values or other things that might be quality issues that I perhaps need to go build data quality uh, rules to help evaluate? Or if I, I'm a data scientist and I just want to better understand the data before I start to consume it, I can come and see the profile and get a better understanding of my data. Once you know what it is that you want to evaluate, you can build data quality rules that are very simple to very complex to help you evaluate whether or not you have good quality data. We also have the ability for AI to suggest data quality rules which will look at the data within your asset and suggest what are some appropriate rules that you could run. So here we have a custom rule that shows that the compute value must always be greater than or equal to the emissions value. And without me prompting or suggesting anything, I was given an expression that I could start to apply and give a new data quality dimension to and start to run this on my data asset. I already have some data quality here, so I'm not going to add that. But here you can see I have a bunch of simple rules like empty, empty blank field checks to help make sure that I'm always getting good populated data. I can run more complex checks like data type matches to make sure that uh, my values are always in the expected format. Here I can do table lookups to evaluate my reference data and make sure that the, every value I have in this column is matched and approved against the appropriate reference value. And here I'm going to look at a custom rule that I've written to help say this is specifically looking for outlier values on this one emissions field to make sure that it's within an expected range. So I can look at whether or not the emissions falls between 10 and 400 and anywhere where it does not, I can see that something has gone wrong and I need to go evaluate my data quality even deeper. It's very simple to add data quality rules through the out of box checks that can be as simple as select a rule and select the columns that you want to apply that rule to, or you can apply custom rules, which will allow you to use out of the box expressions to build whatever kind of data quality check you'd like to run. You can also view the schema and the data quality rules that you have applied to that schema. So if you want to see how is my data quality performing all up, and I want to see which rules are failing, which rules need more improvement, or I'm fine tuning my data quality, I can come here and see how each one of my columns looks uh, against the quality score. Once I've built out my data quality rules and I'm comfortable with how they're running, I can run a data quality scan from right here, uh, just as a one time scan, or from data quality uh, all up, I can also come to the manage icon where I can build scheduled scans to run my data quality every hour, every day, every week or month. And then I can also build alerts to show where did I have something go wrong with my data. 
So here, I already have some scheduled scans running. I'm going to build uh, an alert that says anytime my score dips below a 95, I need to see and be notified that something's gone wrong with my data quality and here are the people I want to contact. And I can scope this to the specific assets that I care most about. So that way, anytime there's an issue with my data quality, I'm being appropriately notified and go take action. Other than your scheduled scans and alerts, this is where you'll come to build connections or monitor your data quality scans. So when you get started doing your data quality, you'll start off by building some connections where again, you can connect to all different storage types across your data state. So AWS Gen 2, Fabric, Databricks, and Snowflake are all supported data source types that you can start to run data quality right out of the box here with Purview. Now, once you've started to run some data quality, you want to evaluate all up your progress against uh, different elements that you want to see, you can come into the reports and start to look at your data governance report or the data quality health report to look at how is data quality doing across my entire data estate. And here we have a, an out-of-box quality score that will show you the all up score showing you the overall data quality performance for your organization or by domain where are certain dimensions of data quality lacking or not being applied at all. And the heat map will show you where do you have hot zones that need to go improve a specific aspect of their data quality. Other than the data quality report, we'll also have the data governance report that helps users in the central data office to understand how am I progressing against my data governance standards? And what are the things that I can go do to improve any specific domain of data or drive teams to always have consistent standardization? So here, again, I'll have a single governance score. I can filter down to a specific domain or standard and look at what is it that is failing, who's doing good, where do we need to prioritize additional effort to make sure everybody is getting on point with our expected controls. When we talk about how is all of this data pulled together for data governance, this is where our controls come into place, where the data governance team can come into purview and look at the different control groupings and look at things like data product usability, and they can come in and evaluate it, that it's not healthy and start to look at editing what are the things that make it defined as not healthy. So you can apply a specific owner for a standard or scope this to specific domains if it only applies to a part of your organization. You can define specific thresholds to say what is the ex expected score to say that this data is healthy or not healthy. And you can customize these control thresholds to fit whatever your expectations are for each of these standards. Within that, you can also define the specific rules that will be evaluated as a part of this control. So when I want to evaluate that my metadata quality and data products are highly usable, they need to have good descriptions. Their domains need to have good descriptions, and they should have glossary terms with descriptions. So I can evaluate all of these, or I can come in and quickly edit the overall character limits to say, here, I want to make sure that it actually has 50 characters. Or I can add holistically a whole brand new rule to say, I want to make sure that I, I have a specific business use length applied to my data. And in a no code fashion, I can add new rules to my data standards as needed. So I'm not going to add any new rules here because I'm happy with that. And then as you're building out your controls and your rules, this will help to also provide specific actions for each one of these rules that might be failed as people are building out the data catalog. So when we come here into the actions portions, I can see that all of the data actions that need to be taken for just myself and a specific domain. So now I know exactly what it is that I, as a data steward or as a data product owner, need to come into Purview and do to improve the quality of my metadata or to improve the quality of my data, ensuring that I always have high data health and improve the trust and usability of the data for others in my organization. 